So I got a little treat in the mail a couple days ago. Uh, it was from a friend of mine. Uh, you might know him. His name is Carl Reese. And uh, he is also known as the endurance driver. Uh, he's broken a number of world records. He's in the Guinness Book. Uh, well, he has a little invention. It is called the Autopilot Buddy. Now, when Autopilot was first released on the Tesla cars, and actually functional, and I'm not talking about traffic where cruise control, I'm talking about actual Autopilot, you could go about a half hour without the car nagging you to hold the wheel. Then came along Firmware 8. And with Firmware 8, Tesla increased the nags to the point where it is a pain in the butt. And they also changed the notifications. So instead of going ding, ding, ding to alert you, you know, give the wheel a little tug. Even if I have my hand resting on the wheel in case of something happens, it just flat, slowly pulses the dash screen. And it doesn't always, you know, if you're paying attention to what's going on around you, you might not see or notice that flashing before it's too late. And then the final warning went from just disabling autopilot to now disabling it permanently for the rest of your drive. And it doesn't always give you an audible notification too. Well, if it's a bright day out, I'm driving around, I'm keeping an eye on what's going on around me, cars maintaining my speed, I have no reason to really look at the dash. It just gets to be a pain in the butt. Well, enter Autopilot Buddy. Let me take it off my steering wheel here. The Autopilot Buddy fits onto the steering wheel and it simulates a hand always slightly tugging at the wheel. Now, we're gonna give this a try today and see how well it does. And I will note that um, I do keep a hand on the wheel at all times when I'm driving. Uh, and even though I do that, the car still notifies me that I still get the warning saying, oh, please hold the wheel. And especially if it's a long road trip drive um, and that autopilot disables, I mean, you don't even get traffic. Do, do you get traffic? You know, I think they give you, let you have traffic or cruise control. But the only way to get your autopilot back is to pull off the freeway, completely park the car, and then start back up again. Now, occasionally that doesn't even work and you gotta actually get out, close the door, then it'll come back in. It varies back and forth. So, um, we got it on here. Let's, uh, <clears throat> that's it. Sits on the steering wheel there. No, that is not an oil change tag. That is for my tire rotations. <laughs> but, uh, that's it. It's held on by uh, two neodymium magnets, very strong neodymium magnets. Um, I'm not sure what the actual build material is, and then it's got lead shot inside for for the weight, uh, and you never come into contact with the lead. No, 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 no real risk of uh, lead poisoning or getting it on your hands. It's all sealed inside. Um, although of course the box does have the lead warning. If careful, those of you in the state of California might get cancer. Thank God I'm in Wisconsin and not California. So I'm going to turn on my little mini dash cam there. I got uh, to record the center, uh, the driver screen, and we got my dash cam up here. So we're going to take a look on how well Autopilot Buddy does. I'll give a little verbal commentary. And I will also do a uh, demonstration of why you need to be very careful if you decide to go for an autopilot buddy. And if you do want to purchase, link's in the description box below. No, I don't get any kickbacks. I'm just testing another Tesla-related product. All right, we're going to pull out onto the main street here. A lot of the snow is finally melted. Not the best lines. Alright, it is on, and I'm, just for the purposes of this demonstration, 
I'm actually not going to touch the wheel, but my hands are literally just, uh, I, okay, I take that back. I am touching the wheel. I'm just grazing the wheel just in case. Car, change lanes. There we go. It's having trouble seeing the lines. Worst case scenario road, one that autopilot I already know has general trouble to the point where it usually nags me. And once again, I repeat, even with using a default uh, a defeat device for the autopilot, this isn't a, something that gives you more safety. This takes it away, and I'm going to have to disengage autopilot on this curve here. So you need to be very vigilant. Now, uh, making sure autopilot stays on, personally, I, I think um, it does add a little bit of safety with having the autopilot on rather than, you know, off completely. But the amount of nags, you know, it's just crazy lately. All right, autopilot's back on, bring her up to speed. the very visible yellow lines that you guys are probably seeing autopilot there we go see autopilot has a lot of trouble on this road never quite figured out why I've been on worse roads that it's worked flawless on now, I'm still not doing any control of the car as you can see autopilot is active no nakes at all yet shaky there. Just wandering just a little bit. Here's the worst spot coming up right here. The lines disappear a little bit. And then we've got a passing lane. One thing that can trigger a nag is by having autopilot on and then manually increasing the speed. Oh, this is weird. Never had it go all the way to the right lane before. Usually I always keep it on the left. Uh, so if I manually press the accelerator, I'm going to do so now. Uh, the warning auto, auto steer will not brake. It's popped up now doing like 15 over the speed limit, I'm going to slow down again. But usually, if, if you're not touching the wheel and you manually override the speed of autopilot by pressing the pedal, it will pop up a warning. So at the moment, at least, it appears that the defeat device, the autopilot buddy, is working. We're going to have to disable autopilot right here, though. the uh, collision warning. I have it set to early detection. I'd rather it warn me and I not need it than not warn me and I did need it. Make a right here. Now, I mean, we're going to go over to a, a spot where um, autopilot cannot handle and disengages every time. Uh, disengages to the point where you know, the sirens, the warnings, 
Now, the reason I want to show you this, and this is the reason why, th this is to show you why you still need to have a hand on the wheel, especially using a defeat device. Because you have a defeat device on the wheel, and you get to a point where the car wants the driver to take over. Now, without a defeat device, the car will, even if it wants you to take over and you're not touching the wheel, the car will still do its best to maintain uh, control of the vehicle and then bring it to a complete stop. But if you have a defeat device, the car then thinks you have your hand on the wheel and you're ready to take over, and instead of doing its best to maintain, it will automatically just completely release steering controls directly to you, which can be very, very dangerous. <coughs> Still nothing. He usually does pretty good here on, uh, on Loomis, Loomis Road. The Stakeout, good restaurant. And of course a red light, so... Follow that pizza truck. <coughs> and the problem at this spot is going to be, oh, of course, another red light. Because there is a hump in the road, a slight loss of lines, and a curvature all at the same time. Even though it's a low speed road. I think I've only got it to successfully go through that, li that line maybe a handful of times in the last two years and 50 4,000 miles. <clears throat> All right, here we are. Should be right about here. Now, I'm... Really? Really, out of all days, it actually works. <laughs> That's funny. Out of all days, the car actually successfully goes through. <clears throat> all right, let's turn around and try again one more time. I've lived over here for 10 years. This is the first time I've ever driven through this parking lot. Oh, now we can test it going back the other way. Twice going e once going each way. My gosh, this car's trying to make a liar out of me. Of course, when you want autopilot to fail, it doesn't. And when you when you do want autopilot to fail, I said that wrong. When you don't want autopilot to fail, it does. When you do want it to fail, it won't. No, really. All right, one more try. Let's try the right lane this time. Yep. It 
immediately released control straight to the hands. It did not even give me a chance to touch the wheel. That right there shows you why you need to have your hands on the wheel at all times, especially using the Defeat device, the Device. Autopilot is not meant to let you read a book, check your email. It's allow, it allows for insistence, stress relief. So if you do go for an Autopilot buddy, make sure you know limitations. And it's actually going to reduce safety slightly. And you need to be vigilant. Uh, although, now back to the um, stress relief portion of keeping the nags and allowing you to pay better attention to what's going on around you. It is a great device, but it's not for everyone. So if you are going to be someone who will pay attention and hold your wheel, then maybe, you know, maybe something that would be worthwhile, especially if you have a long commute. that is all. Link in the description box below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Uh, looking to buy a Tesla Model S or X, consider using my Tesla referral code. Right now there are Teslas offering um, unlimited free supercharging for the length of your ownership. And um, if you want to also support my channel, Consider becoming a Patreon of my channel or mining some Monero. Links are in the description box below.